Hey everyone, Chris here. This is the first in a new series I'll be doing where I'm going to walk you through my photographic process in a sort of master's talks about photography. I'm going to show you a whole bunch of photographs I've taken and over the next series of videos, I'm going to talk about things like composition, uh, lighting, how to look for light in the natural world, how to read light and get the most out of your photographs, uh, lenses, long lenses, short lenses, what to use and when to what effect. I'm going to talk about things like my post process, my color correction, some of the things I do with color theory in my photos. I'm also going to discuss things like working with models and how to approach a model and how to work professionally with them to get the best results you can when you're photographing someone else. So today is the first in this series and today I'm going to talk about street photography. And street photography to a lot of people means sort of casually walking around and capturing people on the street, which I'm going to show some of. I'm also going to show you how to shoot the street and how to get really great sort of urban photography. So let's get started. Okay, so here's a shot uh, out of the box. I want to share a big secret with you guys that's never failed me, which is that if I can, I usually try and shoot my subject matter in the shade. So I'll look for where the light is naturally playing out. This shot was probably done around four or five o'clock in San Francisco. And I tend to work in the shade and then let the bright lights play out further back. And that kind of gets everything a little bit of a nice haze and gives you a really great evocative feel to your shot. It also gives you control then to go in and brighten this in darkness, shadow areas, pull some detail back out. Uh, anything you see in this video that has sort of a letterboxing to it, meaning there's black bars at the top and bottom, that's called letterboxing. I shot with a anamorphic lens and I have a whole video where I talk about anamorphic photography. I recommend you check it out if you're serious about photography. It's what they use in movies. So it gives you a very cinematic looking shot and it helps sort of elevate the work and give you that cinematic feel for free, which is nice. One of the things I love about this shot is that I was able to get the uh, light bulbs for the Irish Times pub here, all nice and bright, and even keep this guy in the foreground, you can see him. I went in, I probably did a little bit of darkening to the corners to kind of draw your eye down the middle, draw your eye to him. So in Photoshop, I would use the burn tool and I would kind of burn it in just a little bit, set it only to like 15% and then just big brush, softly burn it in. I also color correct everything in Photoshop with sets of curves that I've made. In a future video, I'll discuss that, but I definitely gave this sort of more of a purplish, bluish tint to the shadows, more of a yellow to the highlights. And a uh, nice other feature about shooting anamorphic is you get cool things like those cinematic lens flares. There's that blue flare of the word Irish Times that just gives it a nice cinematic feel in general. And I always thought the shot feels very nice, very strong for a shot of the city. So again, here I am shooting in shade, working with the shade. I set my exposures so everything in the shade comes out pretty clear and then everything in the bright sunlight gets a bit blown out. But you have to find a nice latitude in between. You can see here where you can still see the cable car, see the people, but the background, the parking structure, and even that distant tree, they're not blown out. In fact, you don't start clipping until you go way down the road to that distant uh, street light and the end of the road. And you get a really nice latitude of color all the way through. Again, this shot I color corrected overall using curves in Photoshop, which I'll talk about another time. But I think it's always important to sort of give your shots their own color palette, make them kind of come alive. I never use filters. Filters are an invention of the uh, cell phone photography. And it's a cheap, easy way to get a look, but I think half the time people don't know why they're using filters. I often beg people to keep a clean version of your photo if you're using a filter because you might want a better version of that photo five, 10 years from now, and you'll be upset that the only one you have has some jinky photo filter on it to make it look retro. I also lift the blacks here a lot, and I like lifting the blacks a little bit. You can tell the difference from, see those trees to the black bars of the letterboxing of this anamorphic shot. And I just do it to give a bit more texture to the whole shot. I like doing that. I'm not a huge fan of crushed blacks per se. I do use them from time to time, but I also like lifting the blacks a little bit in the shot. And that can be done through the exposure gamma options in Photoshop. Okay, now this is one taking the idea of light and dark to an extreme. And I really like this idea of shooting in the darkness and having a really warm distance, like the sun is pulling through and is streaking across that building on the right. It gives you a very, cool look with the with the with the brights and the darks and the warms and the cool tones in my opinion this is just my opinion shooting shooting urban photography and these lessons you take into any photograph you take of course but this is just my opinion on as i shoot and i'll tell you guys another trick here which is that i definitely color corrected this one by hand and i can tell you for sure i brought the shadow areas down i cooled them down and then what i did was i made another layer in photoshop and i made that layer totally warm just 
made the color balance in the reds and yellows much stronger in the blues and greens. And then what I do is I'll go in, I'll layer them, and I'll just use the erase tool. And I'll start to erase the warm layer to reveal the cool layer. So uh, obviously I warmed up the center back and the building on the right. And then I erase the rest of it around there to get the blue of the building on the left and the green of the trees and the blue of the street and the blue of the fire hydrant in the foreground. And I think it just gives it a nice feeling. It gives it the, the, the warms and the cools, the brights and the darknesses. And I also most likely uh, darkened the foreground a little bit more for a greater contrast between the ideas of light and dark. Okay, so I don't know why, but I'm, I'm often drawn to alleyways and places in between buildings. I just think they're interesting. They feel like corridors to other places. Sometimes I think they can feel kind of narrative like this one where the scooter was, you know, frame left. Almost really like an establishing shot. You know, you're going to push it on this. You're going to cut to the scene inside the restaurant where they're talking. And I'm just drawn to them. I don't know why. It's just a funny thing in me when I walk around. I'm always shooting alleys. Don't know why, but I like them. Okay, so like I told you before, I tend to uh, expose for shadows and shade. And sometimes I'm walking around, I'm doing urban photography, I'll leave my setup set that I know would be good to go. So if something exciting happens, I can just turn around and snap that moment. Well, uh, the firefighters are coming out of the fire station here. I turned around and I shot a few shots of it. And when I got home, I found out the exposure levels were totally off because I had forgotten that for a split second, I had adjusted my exposures to get a different shot and it was just all a mess. And now I'll tell you guys something about me that you might hear very different from 99% of the photographers here, but I almost never use RAW. Everything I shoot, I mostly use JPEG. I only use RAW for super professional work where you're gonna wanna make sure you have it in your pocket because the files are huge. They're kind of unwieldy. Um, you know, a lot of people tell you you have to shoot RAW. I shoot 99% of the stuff I do in just photo JPEG. However, uh, during this time, I actually did have the RAW setting turned on from a previous shoot on my, uh, on my Canon, so it actually got the RAWs. So I was able actually to salvage this photo by going into the RAWs and then adjusting the exposure so everything looked good. Uh, but it's a morality tale, so it's up to you. You can shoot RAW if you want. A lot of guys tell you how to shoot RAW, but I tell you they're big files, they'll fill up your hard drives. Um, I only recommend shooting raw if you are disciplined enough to delete things you don't like. So if you have a whole shoot and you only got three good shots, I recommend deleting the other raws if you really hate the shots because it's just going to eat up your hard drives. But that's up to you. I shoot mostly JPEG. I very rarely shoot raw. But this is an interesting story where raw actually saved my shot. Okay, so I love the juxtaposition of this ultra-modern building next to the Gothic Cathedral. I thought it was a great shot. It shows a lot of great things with structure, with light. And then I ended up doing was to kind of punctuate even more. I actually put that warm flare on myself in Photoshop. I kind of just made a layer, took the paintbrush, really fat brush, really soft edges to it, picked sort of an orangey sun yellow and just sort of painted that on a little bit. And then I just dropped the transparencies down and put a little bit of Gaussian blur to it. And I think it looks great, it sort of evokes the idea of the sun on the left side, even though there was no sun there, it was just a bit brighter, but I think it's a, it's a fun way of making a photograph bigger than life. So here's a little bit of the shooting street where you shoot people. Uh, I hate getting people's faces, I never run up and invade someone's personal space, but if I'm walking by and I see a cool looking environment or somebody that feels very natural and cool, I like to shoot it. Uh, so once again, this is just a very simple color correct. Uh, as I mentioned before, I've lifted the blacks here. And this is, again, anamorphic shooting. Uh, gives you a very cinematic look. A uh, very simple shot, I liked it. On the other extreme, so we're putting it all together now, I saw this, this crosswalk, and this woman was walking across the street, and I had my camera set to shoot in the shade with the blown out distant area. And I just sort of kind of walked with her quickly and got the shot, and I like it a lot. It's a really kind of fun, nice, natural feel. I like the symmetry of the crosswalk and her in the center. Once again, I, I color corrected this using curves, and then recovered anything I wanted to not be blue by just erasing or doing a layer to that nice blown out sort of distant area. Okay, uh, again, just sort of casual man of the street life. Okay, I don't know about you guys, but does anyone here know who James Hong is? He was in Blade Runner and most famously, he's the voice of Poe's dad in Kung Fu Panda and in Mulan, he's the vizier. Anyway, uh, this guy reminds me so much of James Hong. He was also in Big Trouble in Little China. He was the villain in Big Trouble in Little China. Anyway, I saw him and I got this photo. I just love this guy. I love his hat. I love his, his, his jacket and the pins. It's just an interesting character. And so I photographed him later on. I was like, what is, 
he looks just like James Hong. Okay, so I was walking around, I just love this idea of this guy on his bike under this gigantic Valentino woman who's almost standing over him like some kind of Greek god or a pantheon. It's just an interesting image, I thought, of this guy just on his bike hanging out at this giant billboard. I always thought it was a very cool shot. Just sort of spoke to me, sort of the juxtaposition of the, of the large, the small. Okay, so this is more of putting it all together, and this was a 200 millimeter lens, and that long lens just sort of collapses down the distance of the near and far. I mean, you can tell, you know, this is this is at least one city block between those stoplights uh, in the foreground, the background, and it does not look that far at all. And by going with a very long lens, 200 millimeters, I was in the shade again. Once the guy shoot in the shade. And it just brought this whole thing together. I just loved it. You have the whole sort of Big Al's sort of cabaret club, and you can see everything, the guy playing the clarinet in the building, all the way down to that building with the dome at the end. And the sort of 5 p.m. shooting gives you that beautiful haze on the buildings up on the hills in the distance. And this was actually using curves, and I actually created a set of curves that I use for different shots. This one's actually using a curve I call Hot City that I invented myself that I saved out into my Photoshop actions. And I like to, when I do make a Photoshop curve I like, I like to name it and then put it in a special folder so I can go back and just try different color corrects on shots, see how evocative they are. But this one looks this way because it's a very, very long lens. And that long lens just gives you a great feeling of distance and brings it all together. This cable car shot is also an example of 200 millimeter lensing and it totally flattens everything down. It brings the street together. You can get really close to the cable car. Uh, with no worries, sometimes I sort of I just sort of step out in the street a little bit if it's clear, get the shot, color correct it in. Like I mentioned before, I lift the blacks a little bit using the gamma. I'll lift the blacks uh, so they're not quite so dark. Um, like the black bars in this video are nice and dark, and you can tell by the shadow areas in this video that the blacks have been lifted up a little bit. And once again, I think it's a great effect, warm, warm effect in the winter. It looks really nice. Okay, I'm just throwing these in for fun. This was at the Chinese New Year celebration in San Francisco, downtown San Francisco. And I think it's important when you shoot and expose to make sure you get things like the, the way the smoke combines. You'll want to shoot at a faster shutter speed to try and freeze time and to get things, nice frozen moments. Uh, I just thought these were very cool shots, the crowds and the different characters and the smoke. And then leading to night, here are a couple shots of the lion dancers and the dragon is coming down the street on the right hand side. And I just like the way it all comes together. I definitely had to color correct for the street lights because of course they were coming off as very orange. So I had to use the color filter in Photoshop to cool everything down to get the whites back in those lights. And then I probably desaturated a little bit and did that thing I do where I sort of paint the color back in by doing a layer that has not been desaturated and just sort of erasing around that. And then there's this shot here with the lion dancer with the firecrackers going off under his feet. And you want to try and shoot as fast as you can so you can freeze the action, all those little sparks and smoke coming up around him. And uh, I love going to events like these. And in the future, I'm looking forward to bringing you to them with me with different videos I'll shoot and try to do some stills and kind of bring you along for the action because it's really fun going to these different events here in San Francisco. So next, I'm going to talk to you about shooting some street and giving yourself a mission as you shoot street. So one weekend, my wife and I went out to go gourmet bakery hopping in San Francisco. And we just sort of invented this ourselves because we, we love bakeries, we love eating uh, all sorts of uh, interesting foodie desserts. So we took one afternoon and we went to these bakeries in San Francisco. I took a number of shots and I decided at the end of it to theme it. So I took the shots and I gave it little title cards. And this ended up being a big hit on Instagram and other social media. So if you're looking for a way to get your work out there, get awareness, I recommend giving yourself a task, like going somewhere and shooting a series of things and then theming it. And then maybe doing titles and then putting it out there as a collective body of work. So here are a few shots from Bakery Hopping in San Francisco. Uh, you know, as we're waiting in line, the girl here was, you know, making cakes and pies. And it was just a great sort of glimpse into shooting street of her in the back room. Uh, preparing and there's all that interesting detail in the shot of what's in a bakery. I think it makes for a very interesting uh, photograph of a person at work. And then of course there was uh, this guy. He was very nice, very nice guy. I asked if I could take his picture before I took it on the way out. Um, very cool guy. Tipped him big in the tip jar. <laughs> but a uh, very interesting looking guy. A very cool environment. You never know what you're gonna find. So you should definitely get out there and shoot because you never know who you're gonna see and what you might find out there. And then once again, this one was making coffee on the side of another bakery and beautiful sunlight was coming in, pouring in the upper right corner. So I tried to capture it, tried to expose the best I could and uh, in post sort of adjust the levels. Lifted the blacks just a teeniest bit. You can almost can't tell, but they're there. 
And then, this is funny, so of all the things I've done uh, on other Instagram and social media, people love food. You know, I'm not really one to photograph my food and say, you know, here's my salad, isn't it great? But since we were doing this mission of going to photograph foodie bakeries, I had to get some of the food. And people loved some of these shots of the food. And I have to say, if you're doing this, make sure you try and capture some of the reflections of the lights in the ceiling or the lights in the glass. It gives you a nice double exposure feeling and people really like that. They reacted really well to the sort of uh, ghosted glass effects you can get by trying to get imperfections in your shot and then using the camera's focus to blur them out in camera. And then here's the outro card. So I talked about the bakeries you we went to and people like that because it shares an event you've done and it gives them information on where to go to see it themselves or to eat it themselves. I did the same thing here. We, uh, we went to New Orleans. Um, we go every so often to New Orleans to, to chill out. And I decided to do a, you know, like another book and called it Seven Nights in New Orleans. And we just walked around and just took shots of people on the street and the environment, the cobblestones, the textures, the lighting. Okay, now this one here, this is a trick I do all the time. Okay, this store was closed at night. But if you don't know this or not, you can take your camera, you can take your phone, and you put it right up against the glass. Put the lens right up against the glass and then take a picture. And if you do that, you won't get the reflection of the window. You'll get what's inside the store. So it's a great way of getting moody, interesting photographs of closed businesses by putting your phone or your camera right up on the glass and then take the picture. And you'll, you, it's amazing, you'll get wonders. It'll look like you're there in the building at night when you're not, you're outside a window. Again, I don't know why alleyways and hallways, I find them mysterious and interesting. I like the idea of this uh, bar. I love the sort of fiery neon on the ceiling and how it sort of evoked almost like the gates of hell. Very cool stuff. Loved it. And then there's this guy. I just love the way of getting people at work. He was playing this sort of jazzy, smooth saxophone stuff uh, in one of the restaurants we were in. Very cool, very real. Same with this guy. He was doing restoration of gas work lamps and creating gas work copper lamp work. And it was just a very cool guy. I just want to get some shots of him at work. And same with this one. This is just a waiter, you know, but because New Orleans has all that beautiful old architecture, it just sort of spoke to me. And I really love the lighting in this one. It almost feels, I don't know, I'm not, I'm not saying it's the greatest photo ever, but it almost reminds me of like an oil painting or like an old Renaissance painting. You know, it's, it's something I just really liked. And then this last guy, he was uh, trying to get things up in the rain, trying to set the table for people. And I just love the, the rain coming down, the, the steam, the way he's being sort of gelled by the red, red uh, cloth of the, of the uh, umbrella. It's just a cool photo. You don't see his face. So he's a sort of like faceless guy doing his job. And it just makes an interesting photograph, the colors and the juxtaposition and everything. So that's my opinion of shooting urban photography, urban ex exploration, urban street. I have many more, but this was sort of a simple, first, easy to digest dusting. I want to show you guys things that I feel you could go out right now and try and accomplish with your own photography. So if you like this, subscribe, hit the bell icon. If you have any questions or comments, put them in the comments section. Let me know if there's anything you want me to talk about in future talks, and I will address those. I read every comment, and I make notes on things you guys want to see and want to talk about. So let me know. Thanks for coming. See you next time. Bye.